Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Anna Blackman. I'm a senior lecturer at James Cook University in Townsville, Australia. And I've been asked to give you a video capture of a case study that I presented at the Best EN Think Tank uh, for 2013. Uh, my presentation was called Building Community Capacity by Developing Regional Businesses um, Networks. And I used a technique called business coaching. So I'll actually take you through that process of um, what business coaching is, um, what we actually did for the case study, and what were the results from that case study. So just to give you a bit of an introduction, um, when we talk about tourism and how it is proposed as, I guess, an add-on value for businesses, uh, much of it is a strategy for community development and it's um, often a, a strategy to use tourism as beneficial, especially in rural and remote regions. They think that if they add tourism into their business that this is going to be a positive thing. Unfortunately, what we find is that these regions do not always enter into the business of tourism with a clear understanding of the associated difficulties or challenges that they may face if they are to incorporate tourism into their businesses. The challenge for this particular project was to critically examine the links between tourism development and the impact this has on community well-being and the impacts um, and I guess kind of look at these impacts in more detail and to identify ways in which tourism can make a positive contribution to community wellbeing if there is one to be made. Um, so while we, um, those that are responsible for development assume that tourism may be a source of economic opportunity, um, many business owners are not actually involved with the tourism industry and they don't actually understand how they are to engage with the tourism industry. They don't know who they need to see, they don't know who they need to talk to in order to actually engage in that process. So this is particularly the, um, the case for businesses that are outside um, of what is generally considered the tourism industry and for micro, small and medium enterprises that have limited time to explore avenues that stretch their business to new products or new markets. If we have a look at the actual tourism um, and if you see it as a comprehensive system, it enables recognition of the web of linkages between the industry and the broader community. Um, and it enables consideration of new avenues for development of business opportunities beyond those that are traditionally called tourism. But it's not as straightforward as that. And studies of why many businesses are not engaged in with the industry in rural or remote regions suggest that there is the need for these small and micro businesses um, to build capacity in and around tourism. So if we have to look at um, the tourism system, we have to examine the potential for the tourism to contribute to community wellbeing. It's important to consider tourism as a system which stresses the interconnectedness between the demand side, so that's the market, and the supply side, so including transportation, attractions, services and information and promotion, as well as with the external elements such as the natural environment. Um, and cultural resources, social structures including organisation and leadership, community attitudes, availability of finance and entrepreneurs, competition and government policy. So there's a lot of things that businesses need to take into account if they're actually going to try and implement tourism into their businesses. If we look at coaching as a tool to help build capacity within a lot of these kind of rural and remote regions or small businesses, um, there's a number of different practices that people could choose to use to actually support capacity building. And these sorts of things can include things like mentoring, which is one-on-one -on -one kind of a learning process where we have someone who has been through that process to actually sit there and help the person who's trying to go through it, look at how they may have done it in the past and give them advice on what to do. There's also things like job assignment, so working on specific roles or tasks within a, a certain kind of um, job that needs to be done. And then there's also action learning, so similar to job assignment but with more structured reflection and support in a particular role. Um, but these kinds of, um, I guess, kind of 
capacity building tools are mostly used in the larger organisations. We haven't seen them used too much in the small and medium enterprise kind of area. So two options that could lend themselves to building capacity within rural and remote locations in this context were things like classroom programs and also business coaching. So what we've done is we've actually looked at, well, if we were to do classroom programs and what we've termed that now as is workshops and these are used quite widely because workshop environments actually allow for participants to interact and develop social capital through the use of networking and they also help participants by structuring time in their business schedules to participate in development options. So in a contrast and more significantly business coaching actually helps focus the individual on particular goals through the use of one-on-one -on -one sessions and helps them with learning um, and behavioural change over that continual process. So the link between the use of goal setting and higher performance has been established in literature and we are starting to see more and more cases of where this is so. So business coaching is a long-term practice and it's more comprehensive in terms of assessment, challenge and support. So the use of workshops to relay coaching skills and then the follow-up one-on-one coaching sessions has been suggested as an effective combination to provide maximum effectiveness. And this is the um, method that we used for this particular case study. But what I wanted to do is give you a bit of a background about, well, wh why is coaching so important? Well, what we found is that basically coaching is used mostly in an executive form for larger organisations and there are something like over 50,000 coaches worldwide. Um, organisations invest over $2 billion um, in coaching annually so it's a huge market that is growing at such a fast pace and it's one of the and as, as I said before it's one of the fastest growing fields in business to date. Um, so what I wanted to do next is talk about, well, what is an actual definition of business coaching? Okay, so business coaching for this particular project is defined as a formal relationship with a designated coach. And this is where the coach and the coachee actually collaborate to assess and understand the coachee and their leadership developmental tasks. So to challenge current constraints while exploring new possibilities and to ensure accountability and support for reaching those goals and sustaining that development over time. So it's related to the fields of mentoring, counselling and consulting but actually draws from each of those areas and has created its own niche area. So for this research um, I actually also distinguish between an internal coach and an external coach. So for the purposes of this research we actually use external coaches to the organisation and with that, that can bring a lot of different um, things with it um, that you could go on and on and talk about where the internal coach and the I guess internal politics of an organisation and what that can create. So for that for that purpose we have used external coaches so we don't have to look at I guess kind of organisational politics. So business coaching in the tourism field, so what has been done um, in terms of the um, coaching in the tourism industry? Well there's very little limited literature available on business coaching in the tourism sector and I actually did a search on what has been done in this field and I entered in things like um, coaching, coaching for executives, coaching in the tourism industry and that sort of thing and only one book chapter has been published on this actual topic and that was published in 2008 um, by myself. So there is a developing, sorry, but there is a developing trend for research in the area of management development and the importance of networks and the ability to share this knowledge. So we're actually seeing more of a trend in moving towards, well, what kinds of techniques could we use to help develop um, tourism within businesses that may be looking to use this as an add-on to their business. Um, so that's encouraging that we are seeing this because that means then we will start to see more literature around these developing kind of techniques within this industry. 
One of the things that we found though is we need to have a look, well why aren't businesses adapting or taking on these types of techniques to help improve their business practices? And in a lot of the time it comes down to the different challenges that these small or micro businesses may face that larger organisations don't have to deal with. The first thing is, is that usually it's time. Okay, business own, small business owners are usually busy all of the time. They're working in their um, operations of their business 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They don't actually have enough time to actually put into actually developing their business and using different techniques to help grow their businesses. The other is, um, issue can be distance. So especially if these businesses are located in rural or remote communities, they don't have the same kinds of opportunities that larger organisations do that are located in capital cities or in larger urban areas. So distance can be a real issue and there we need to have a look at well what sorts of technologies could we maybe bring into um, these kinds of areas that could help them actually get that support and be able to access these different types of developments. The other thing that we found though is that with uh, especially in remote and rural locations within Australia. Um, technology can have its own problems because if you don't have the right kind of internet connection, you can't do things like Skyping, um, emailing and telephone kind of conversations on a very kind of um, regular basis because you often find that there are problems with the internet connection and that sort of thing. So it can then make it very hard as well. There's also the issue of relevance. So the combining of tourism with other activities, that means that you know tourism is not their core business. So how can they actually make sure that it, it can be incorporated into their business um, and that it's going to make a difference and that they can see the relevance of how it could actually help their business. They also need to have someone who is strong in leadership. So they need to have a local leader who is willing to be the person to push this idea and make sure they're the champion of what they're trying to do. And another important thing is that they need to have access to business networks. And I'll go into this in a lot more detail because of the importance of having those networks as support for especially those that are located in regional and remote areas. Often it's the single business owner who has to do everything themselves and so therefore they they don't tend to rely on others to help support them and provide them with other information. They often see others in the same kind of area as competition rather than someone that they think that they could actually reach out for and get support from. So I'd like to talk now about a case study. Um, this is um, we did this case study of a group of business owners who were located in the Atherton Tablelands, which is a small kind of community located in north um, eastern Australia. And the, this is a place where tourism is, um, I guess, already thriving, but it's a small community. It's not a large one, so they often don't have access to a lot of the resources that you would if you were in a larger kind of city base. So what we did was we held a one day workshop um, and we had 14 small business operators um, attend that and they could, um, participated in the one day workshop with us. And we also then had, um, after the one day workshop, we had three volunteers who volunteered to have one on one coaching sessions with myself over a four month period. So therefore we were actually able to evaluate those that just did the workshop compared to those that did the workshop and the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions because we actually held, um, got them to fill out evaluation forms at the end of the workshop and then again at the end of the four months whether they did one-on-one -on -one coaching or not. So um, it investigated the coaching as a capacity building tool for these kind of small businesses looking to incorporate tourism into their businesses. Um, and so we we're actually able to look at, well, what were the opportunities that they saw their business having for um, investing in tourism into their business and also what sorts of challenges did they think they were going to face. Well, what we found is that many of the participants had some experience or skill set that they thought that they could utilise to expand their business and actually 
venture into tourism as an add-on value to their business. They also thought they could capitalise on the uniqueness of their location and that they would be able to provide services in demand to local, um, by locals to a national and international visitors. So they thought they could actually expand that market further. So this is quite typical of tourism businesses. They think all think that they've got this unique special area, um, some sort of thing that they can do that will draw visitors in to come and have a look at their business and ultimately spend money at their business. When we looked at, well, what would stop you from doing this? What sorts of challenges would you have um, that you, you know, that you would find that you would need help with if you were to go through with this? One of the things that they found was that they didn't have as much cash flow as they thought they would need to be able to set it up. So there was a lack of funding. Um, international markets were a major concern. With everything that's happened with the global financial crisis, people were a bit weary of whether they thought um, now was the right time to go into a new business kind of venture when they weren't sure what was happening in the international market. They were unsure of how to access the market as well, so they didn't know who they needed to contact in order to actually go through and work with um, how to set up the business side of things for um, incorporating tourism. And they also felt they had a lack of skills and training, so they didn't feel like they were trained up enough to be able to actually work through it themselves. Time management and workload were obviously an issue because a lot of them are single kind of business owners who everything is left to themselves. So trying to find the time to actually put into something like this to implement it was a big issue for many of them. And the lack of networking. They, Again, as I said before, because they were in a small kind of community, they often looked at the other business owners as competition rather than someone if they actually provided a support network where they could actually help each other to go through certain challenges and work through and maybe a collective voice might be better than a single voice. So that lack of networking and not sure of who they could trust or who they thought they could work with in order to help implement tourism within their work uh, within their business. So when we have a look at what we found, um, what we found basically is that there is isn't the importance of business networks. Um, this is really important because they don't need to be the expert on everything. They need to have these support networks to help them with their businesses. So if they can actually get a group of people, like-minded people who are actually looking at, well, how can we actually develop the region rather than just my particular business, these kinds of groups are actually working a lot better and more successfully than those who are just trying to do it for their own business because they actually have that support network around them. We've also found that coaching adds value to tourism businesses by providing the opportunity for businesses to interact with each other. So the whole method of using the workshop as a one day kind of forum where people could network with each other and get to meet other local businesses who were interested in actually developing into this area was something that they found really beneficial and they thought this is what I can use to help me to implement my, um, my ideas into my business. The skills that were learnt in the workshop allowed the participants to develop capacity within their businesses. So this kind of general kind of coaching skills of goal setting and organisation, teamwork, uh, I guess communication skills have actually helped them to put in place the goals that they wanted to set, but it's actually helped them to reach those goals. And what we found was those that did the one-on-one -on -one sessions were better able to implement what they had learned. So better to better implement those into their daily routine. So they were actually even more successful than those that just did the workshop. So what we're seeing here is that continual process of having someone that you have to report to to show that yes, I am working on these goals and I know I need to be showing this person what progress I've made since the last time we met. That was the thing that kind of catapulted them to actually achieving the goals that they had set at the workshop, whereas others who had only completed the workshop were not as far along as those that did the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Um, so yeah, and I guess the ultimate conclusion was that 
the learnt skill of goal setting allowed the participants to move in from one goal to the next, helping them to actually achieve the goals that they've set. So it was kind of like a spiral. They could move, once they achieved one goal, they were then able to move, they had the skills then to move on to the next goal and they could keep going and they had these skills set with them which helped them to develop their businesses. So I hope this is something that you could maybe incorporate into your studies and look at the different ways that you could help businesses to actually incorporate tourism, especially in the sense of small and regional kind of businesses and the difficulties that they may have. Thank you.